Welcome, I'm Cesar Alvarez, and I'll be your instructor for the Emmy Broker Charting Course. Uh, if you found me, you probably found me through Alvarez Quant Trading. I've been programming an Emmy Broker probably since 2000 or somewhere around there. Uh, I've been learning lots. Emmy Broker is a great tool, very, very powerful. Uh, one thing I want to make clear, there's always multiple ways of doing something in Emmy Broker. You may see me do it one way, you may discover another way of doing it, or you may read about a different way of doing it. Um, 90 percent of the time it doesn't really matter which way you do it it's just the way that makes most sense to you uh, that other 10 percent it usually only matters when speed is of importance and then that matters which way you do it but again as you go as we go through the examples oh you will hear me often say that there's a different way of doing this you may discover it or you may wonder why didn't i do it this way or that way it's just preference and like i said if it works for you just do it the way it works for you if you, only if it starts to seem slow that's when you should uh, start to do things differently. Uh, I will be going through, uh, just going through each one, you know, each examples, going through and showing you how to do various things. The best way of learning is going and doing your own examples. Think of something very similar to what I just showed you and try doing your own version of that. Uh, one thing that's also very important, let me just show you what we'll be learning or some of the things we'll be see, I'll be showing you. I have this very interesting market. Um, this top chart is showing me kind of the state of the market. Uh, this middle one is kind of showing me entries with a trailing stop and plotting a profit target. And down here, we shot some shapes telling me when, when we scaled in and what things like that. And many more charts we'll be covering. But just wanted to give you a little preview of what's coming ahead. One thing I spend a lot of time on and always looking at for two reasons. One, I can't remember everything with an AMI broker. Two, you accidentally find things. Is the help file. Look at the help file. The help file is Every broker actually has one of the best help files out there that I've seen of just in general programs. So I am, I can't tell you, I'm in probably in this help file every day at least. Um, you know, I'll look up, I'm always just looking up something. It's like, oh, I, how, what's the parameters to this? So I'll go, oh, plot uh, shapes, let's do that. And I go, oh, I always forget the parameter order or something like this or what exactly is available. That is, you know, you'll see me throughout the course use this. Uh, I advise you, you know, look at it, uh, especially when there's a new release. So look at what he's, um, what's, the, what's, in, what's new. You can always learn new things. And sometimes I'll just scroll through it and see if I find something new. Uh, actually, just the other day, I found something new about Emmy Program. I didn't realize a whole new function. Not that I probably will ever use it, but again, you never know what you're to discover. But use the help file. Don't be afraid of it. Use it. It's actually, I actually believe it's quite good. Now, one assumption I make in this entire course is there's a particular setting so if you go to you bring up your settings you'll see there's this right here this quick afl i assume this is churned off for the entire for the course uh this is something that if you've got speed issues you can turn this on but when you turn this on there's a whole other layer of um, things that you got to be careful for uh so that's why i keep it off i keep it off all the time for my own personal use uh, the only time to use this is when you, again, if speed is an issue, this is when you go look at turning this on, but then I highly recommend you read the help file, and I think the help file links to a, a web page explaining how this works. But again, go make sure this is turned off, this is unchecked for the course, and uh, let's get started when, with a very basic um, indicator. All right, let's dive in now. A couple topics we're gonna be covering on this section here. We talk about the different types of index charting indicators, uh, the location of the charting files. Uh, we're gonna do a really quick and simple indicator, show you how quickly and easy you can get going. And then we'll start modifying it, you know, adding change of the color, changing the line styles. And then we'll learn about the parameter dialogues, uh, how to change the display string, and then how to change the color of an indicator to have, you know, depending on certain values, you change how it looks like. And then also how to edit. There's a very weird subtlety in Amy Broker that needs to be make sure that you're aware of. Let's dive right in and let's talk about the type of indicators that we have. All right, so there are uh, what I like to call two different really types of indicators. There's indicators that are shown on a price chart. So uh, a very common example is moving average. So let me throw a moving average on this chart. And you can see this is uh, a moving average indicator. So one thing when you're designing your indicators, deciding is it going to be on a price chart or is it going to be on a separate pane? So let's go add, uh, let's see, let's add the, you know, my always favorite is RSI. So let's scroll down, uh, right click on that, hit insert. And then we have RSI down here. As you can see, 
uh, that is on a separate pane. Uh, so it's a matter of you deciding which way you want to have it. You know, theoretically, I can show RSI up on the price pane, but most of the time people don't do that. So those are the two types of indicators um, that you need to really think about which way you're, you're going to be showing it. And um, we're going to be doing the second type on the second pane that tends to be a little bit easier to start with. And we'll go from there. All right, so where are your, all these indicator files? So if you go under Program Files, Admin Broker, you'll see a Formulas uh, folder. Going into there, you'll see all these formulas here. And you'll see, if you look at those formulas, and let's come over here, all those folders really correspond to all the folders that you see here on the Charts pane. So this is where they're all stored. I've created a course folder. If you go in there right now, it's empty. If I come over here to courses, you'll see that it's completely empty. So let's start uh, and create our first indicator. We're gonna start with historical volatility, something I love to use in a lot of my strategies. So let's get ourselves a new file. We'll call it HV, and then as always, it's .afl. And let's open this up in our editor here. So let's open up a file. Let's see. Uh, Program files, AMI broker, uh, formulas, and like I said, I got a course directory, and then I open that up. Now that you'll see, this course is empty right now, and the way you figure, uh, get it to show at the file, and this probably I could have done this the easier way, is I could right click, and you click on refresh, and it'll uh, redo that. Then I can right click on that new file and click edit, and you'll see the file is completely empty, and we have nothing uh, there to show yet. Uh, let me open up, oh, I should uh, open up the file that I have a file that has historic volatility already in it. So I'm going to open up it for my customs. Uh, under custom is where I have my own. I just, uh, I'm going to edit that. I just really want to copy this little formula here. It saves me the time to remember how to do it. So there's the formula for historic volatility. We're going to do a 20 period historic volatility. So there it is, there, you know, a simple formula for historic volatility. You can do any other formula that you want. Like I said, this is my, this is what we're gonna go with. Now let's uh, do a simple plot. So we wanna go plot, and we see a, an AMI broker is being very helpful, showing us what to do. The first thing is an array. In this case, it's HV. The next thing is the indicator name, which is gonna be displayed, and we'll do call it HV20. And then our color, we'll do color yellow. And something that's nice that Ami Broker does, if you start with color and you hit the control space bar, you'll see it gives you all the custom colors that you can pick from. So this is also really nice. If you don't know, you want to pick something different, uh, there's color yellow, there it is. And save. Right there, we've done our first custom indicator. Now we need to show it. Uh, we can do this in a couple ways. I, uh, when I'm developing my indicators, I tend to do go by this next method here. I'll go to tools, Insert and this will. Uh, whoa, we got oh, forgot somebody called at the end of my first line. Uh, we go to tools, insert chart, and you'll see it gets inserted down here automatically. And let me just get rid of this RSI, and you can see it gets there automatically. Of course, we could have right clicked over here on course and done the insert, but I just like this is just when I'm developing it, this is the way I like to do it. So, there we have it really quick and simple, took us less than a you know, couple minutes, and we've got our first. Uh, our first um, you know, indicator going. Now what is nice from here is I can now, let's say I want to change this to red. I can color red. If I then save the file, you'll see back here how it automatically updates. So this is really nice. You can be um, building your indicator and seeing it update kind of, kind of like in real time. So every time you save, those changes will get propagated there. Um, so yeah, we can also go to, I don't know, what our color can we pick? Uh, it's brown. We save that, and yeah, it doesn't look quite brownish to me, but you know, there is color brown. Let's go back to something that's easy, better to see. Let's go with color yellow. Save that, and there was our yellow line. Now that we've got that saved, oh, we just have a line. Now there's a whole bunch of line styles that you can do, and we'll get into some of these later. So, uh, let's, so the, the default value is style line, so let's just start with that one. Save that, it doesn't do anything. Now let's go to help. This is something I've uh, brought up is always looking help. Help is surprisingly good in my opinion in Ami Broker, given other programs I've seen. So if you go here, you can see all these different styles that you can pick. I'm not going to go through all of these, some of these won't make any sense right now, 
but I will go through and make, uh, make uh, cover them in later parts. But we can do something like uh, style dots. See, here we are. So let's change this to style dots. And then save that. You can see, oh, look, we've got little dots on our chart. I think style dashed is another one. Let me save that. And there we got, uh, we've got the, a dash line. So you can see how we can pick a different styles and very save them quite quickly. So you've got a particular style and color that you like, you can just go simply as that. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things though. We've got, we've hard coded the length, we've hard coded the color, and we've hard coded the style. Uh, sometimes you want to have some flexibility on what those are. So let's start uh, with the length. So if you're familiar with, there is a, uh, a function called param. And it has a name, length, you can see there. The default value, we had 20s. And then the value range that you can have. We're going to do, uh, let's see, uh, historical volatility doesn't make sense for like values less than 2. We'll go up to 200 in steps of 1. So, and then, so that's going to bring, we'll show you where the param comes up. And now that's the value you're going to pass into our, our historical volatility formula. Now I'm going to change this title because now it's just historical volatility, but we'll, I'll show you a little trick later on about that. So if I save that, you'll see nothing really changed. If I right click on this pane, go up to the parameters dialog, you'll see now I have a length. Now I can change this length to whatever I want. So if I want a 100 day historical volatility, I can change it to that. And then you can see the updates in the background. Uh, I can also click over here and I have a little slider bar and you can see that updating live. Uh, yeah, so that's a pretty cool feature there. Now let's uh, add our, you know, same thing for color. It's, so there is a param color uh, function. And you can, you know, so we'll do uh, color and then the default value. We'll do color yellow. We save that. Right click over here, go to parameters, and now you can see we can choose our colors. You can change green, you can see how it changes in the background. Uh, some sky blue. Uh, yeah, so you, it's a very simple way to make some changes. Uh, you can always, you know, pick custom colors from great. Or you can just do whatever you want. Uh, I can't seem to pick the one I really want, which is that one right there. There you go. So, uh, so there's a, you know, like I said, there is a way to change the color. Now, of course, you can do the line. And then we can go to, so if we go over here, there is a param, I forgot the name of it off the top of my head, suddenly. Um, oh, perhaps style, style, and I'm just going to show this one here, save that, right click over here, and now we have style dashed, if we want we can make it thick, and I think dashed, so we can do various things, uh, I won't go through a couple of these, but you know, in case you don't want to show it, there's no draw, uh, don't show the label, so don't show the label at the end. Uh, so there's a couple of these I'll go over later. But again, this is very simple. We've got our first indicator, nice and quick and easy. Uh, now the one last thing we haven't done, let's go back to thick, is you'll notice right now it just says HV. It'd be nice to know what the length is. So it's a very simple process. Uh, uh, there, there are a couple, the easiest way that I'd like to do this is you do HV and then you just do a plus sign and a lead. And then what happens is, is it just adds to the string the length of your HV. So you'll see here, HV 37. Um, so that tells you the length. You can also do, uh, if you want to make it look a little nicer, add some parens and then add a closing paren. If I save that, you'll see now it's HV 37. If I right click, let's go over here. Let's shift this over, get back to here. You see if I, as I scroll around, this value down here changes. And you know, it's really nice and convenient to have that. And of course we have our value that we're showing there. So that is you know, showing the uh, value or the length of your indicator there. So that's very, also very helpful.